This is a bucket. Dear God. There's more. No. Special thank you to all my lovely patrons, especially Nerf Nothing for being an amazing pro patron. Greetings audience, I'm Boomstick and today we're going to be talking about the Game Modder. The Game Modder is a Arduino powered King of the Hill timer, however it can be used for a lot more than that and we will be diving into that throughout this video. The Game Modder was designed by Adam Reed and this is a open source project meaning that both the hardware and the build instructions and the code all available on their website. Game Mode Repository. Check it out. On the Game Mode Repository, you'll actually find more than just the build instructions and supplies and coding we'll need for this bucket, but you'll also find a list of game rules and other things that are really useful for the hobby, so definitely check them out. Now, Adam Reed is one of my local players, and they actually brought some of their earlier prototypes to the Maryland Nerfurter games and we got a chance to test them out. Now this is the current iteration which is the literal bucket timer as we've been calling them and we actually have three specifically so we could play Domination. This version of the game modder is a bucket topper. Essentially it'll fit on any 20 gallon bucket which is great because uh, for the Maryland groups here we have a lot of those. Now, as you can see, there's lots of wires and electronics going on inside here. I'd love to actually kind of 3D print a more organized system for this, but that'll be down the road if I ever have time. <laughs> it's also designed to be able to detach the top here from the bottom, allowing you to access all of the electronics. So it has a couple of different uh, quick disconnect XT60s on here. And the whole thing is powered off of our standard Nerf LiPo. Now I do believe that Adam is working on a power bank system where you can just plug it in instead of having to rely on a LiPo, you can just rely on a power bank essentially. But since obviously us in the community have a rather large supply of LiPos, that's just currently what we have. There's a nice little on off switch on the inside so for in between games you can just switch it off, save on battery. This system also has an aux plug plugged into it. This will allow you to plug it into a speaker or do what we do since we didn't seem to have a Bluetooth speaker loud enough for the whole field to hear. We went ahead and plugged this into a megaphone that we strapped to a pipe connected to the side of the bucket. It was very easy to hear across the entire field, although I do recommend making sure that that megaphone is high enough up so it's not blaring right in somebody's ear, which may have happened to me. And Adam did collect a bunch of sounds for you to be able to load onto the bucket, including a count up and count down. Count begins in five, four, three, two, one. 60 seconds remaining. 30 seconds remaining. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Red team, heel control. Blue team, heel control. This, so this is incredibly useful for admins who don't want to have to worry about keeping a timer or keeping their phone on them. And because you can plug it into a speaker or a megaphone, the entire field should be able to hear the countdown, both counting down to start the game and the countdown to the end of the match. Now, one thing I will say with the bucket timer is, especially if you're hooking it up to a pole to have a megaphone on it, you're gonna wanna put weights in the bottom. Because it's a little top heavy, because all the electronics are right here and there's nothing in the bottom, it's a little bit uh, wobbly and it did get knocked over a good bit. So I highly recommend get some weights, whether it be barbells, dumbbells, whatever you wanna put in the bottom of this thing to make it heavier, I highly recommend it. <laughs> just, I just don't uh, recommend sand or water. Don't recommend that because uh, electronics don't like either of those. Now I was able to build one of these myself because Adam was nice enough to sell me some parts that I needed to make this along with the wooden circle with the custom cutouts and everything on it which I really appreciate it because that's something that I didn't have the tools to do. So for this exact one, if you want that like custom barrel cut out, you might require special tools. But everything else is kind of made up of kind of hodgepodge materials, whether it be the wooden blocks for the 
spacers or just the fact that it's a simple bucket topper. Like most of this is very easily sourced. Now, one of the neat features that I'm actually not able to show off today is the remote. Adam actually has a really cool remote made out of cardboard, which acts as the start button. It has a single button that'll talk to all three buckets that we have on the field to get all three of them to start at the same time. That way you don't have to have three people on the field at once starting the button. Now, as far as what game modes are actually on the bucket, let's walk through them. One of the nice things I really like about this bucket is essentially every question on the timer is pretty much a red for no, blue for yes. So it's gonna ask you a lot of questions and you're just gonna have to scroll through them until you get to the right one. Then obviously we have the game that essentially started this whole thing and that is King of the Hill. Now in my talks with Adam, we went through a couple of different ideas for how we wanted King of the Hill to be played just for how we've done it in the past and how we're doing it presently. But the current way that we've been playing King of the Hill is a simple tap of the button. That'll change it to your team's colors, including this LED strip along the outer edge here. So that way, if you can see the bucket, you'll know who's got it because from a distance, you'll be able to see these LEDs pretty well. Uh, even in daylight, we've actually had pretty good success at seeing these LED strips from across the field. Now, obviously all these games can be set to whatever time you want and with lots of really fascinating functions. The next option, which is the different version of King of the Hill that we did play, which was play hold the hill. Essentially meaning instead of tapping it and you control the hill, you have to stand there and actually hold the button to get it to count down. We did find that we preferred the tap as opposed to hold the hill, but it's nice of Adam to have that as an option if we ever wanted to switch it. I do think hold the hill would do better for a more close quarters CQB kind of style of play because it'll force the player to stay where the bucket is, making them a bit more exposed, as opposed to a more open field where it might be more where it might be better to have the player tap and get to cover because it would make the game drag on a lot longer if they had to constantly hold it for a second, then get shot and going back and forth, which again, we did experience that. Next is the game that really made the Maryland groups want to buy these buckets. As I said, we bought three of these buckets, two of them assembled, and one of them that I built myself. And the way that we used to play Domination was with a bunch of buckets with poles in them, and you just flip the pole to whichever team you were on. And we ran into issues because it only mattered who controlled the bucket at the end to get the points. So the whole game was setting up for those last couple of seconds because we weren't using any flip timers or anything like that. And we didn't want to have to have mods at every single point in order to start and stop the uh, timers. But the way we play it now is a different point system. Basically, you get one point for controlling each bucket at the end of the game. So say if you held all three buckets at the end of the game, you'd get three points. But the nice thing about this is it makes the rest of the game a lot more interesting because you get two points for holding the most amount of time collectively. So in a sense, if you only have one bucket, the other team has two buckets, you're down two to one, but if you had collected the most amount of time across all three buckets overall, you get two points, which will put you at three, allowing you to win the game. That means the hard work that your team puts in throughout the whole game can be rewarded as opposed to the team that may have just put in a last minute rush in order to catch all those points that they may have needed. It really changed the game up and I think for the better. Next up we also have attrition and this is kind of like the flip side of death click so I'll kind of go over them at the same time because you can essentially just set up this bucket for red team or blue team and it'll sit at your team's respawn. You get hit, you come back, you push your team's color. For attrition, it'll be counting down the lives you have collectively as a team, meaning once you get to zero, your teammates can no longer respawn. But for death clicks, it's just keeping track of how many times you've died in the team with the lower number wins because that means they died the least. The next one is a rather unique game mode, which we've only played, I think, one time called Rogue One. Definitely check out the game mode repository if you want to look that one up. It's a little bit more complicated and involved to describe in a couple sentences or so. It's also got modes for whether or not you want the number to go up when you're tapping it for your team's color. It's also got modes for holding it to count down. It's a very intuitive box. It's even got a mode where you can start and stop the timer if you're doing a kind of more explosive type game mode, like plant the bomb or something of that nature. So you have one team that has to pause the timer, the other team that wants it to keep 
counting down. And because it's run off an Arduino, the possibilities are really endless to whatever you want it to be. You don't even have to have it as a bucket topper. You could literally take these same electronics, follow the wiring diagram, and put it into pretty much anything you want as long as you have two buttons and an LCD screen. And as I said earlier, the LEDs are extra. You don't even need to do that. You could build this any way you want, and because all the resources are right there on the Game Over repository, pretty much anyone could build these. Now, for those of you out there who don't want to build it and would rather just buy it, I am working with Adam on a licensing agreement to allow me to build these for other groups. However, I'd like to get a little bit more practice with uh, wiring these up and maybe come up with a better wiring solution so it's not such a uh, mess under here. So if you would like to purchase the bucket, keep an eye out. I do plan on being able to do that soon, hopefully. Uh, I will announce that on my Facebook and Instagram and whatnot. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Hopefully I'll be able to start offering these soon, but if you don't want to wait on me, go to the Game Over repository. Literally everything you need is right there. If I can do it, you can do it. I promise you that. So this has been my, my review of the Game Modder. Definitely check out the links down below in the description. And uh, hey, let me know down in the comments what you think of this really cool bucket design. And don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you want to see more. So uh, yeah, I've been Boomstick. And I'll see you on the field.